Hey everyone, welcome to episode 27 of Heroic Nonsense. Let's keep this train a rolling as these new Transformers and G.I. Joe figures keep coming in. Today we'll be exploring the cold and calculating evil Decepticon Shockwave. This version is the recent 40th anniversary release comic book edition that is based off of the War for Cybertron leader class from way back. So let's dive in and ride the wave as we explore this shocking character. But first, we haven't done this in a bit, so let's start this episode off with a fun little game which I do every so often for characters that have appeared in a lot of comics and cartoons. Try to guess which episodes of G1 that these images are based off of. And if you're feeling particularly brave, go ahead and place your guesses in the comment section below. Stick around until the end where I'll have a bunch more of Shockwave from his comic book appearances. For now, we'll get into a bit of a review of this figure, which I was really excited to get since we don't have any recent iteration of this guy in our collection, and I was holding off until something new came along. I always wanted him for our collection, but I just wasn't into the War for Cybertron leader class version that came with all those extra pieces. And at the time, it wasn't even clear to me that he could be flipped upside down in ship mode to become a semi-accurate version of the laser mode. So here we are, a comic book edition of Shockwave with some nice bonus features and all new color scheme and collectible box, which should hold me over until a completely accurate version is made. So I think the main thing that stands out the most on this figure is that they've painted him in that comic book style to match up with his comic book appearance from way back in the 80s, reproducing that iconic image from issue number five of the Transformers called The New Order. And while we don't have any other figures in this style in our collection, I do appreciate the detail they put in on the paint job to try and replicate that comic book feel. You really need to see the figure from far to get the impact they're going for, which is nice for displays. And to be honest, once I got used to it, I didn't really notice the comic book aesthetic as being out of place with the rest of our collection, which I was originally worried about. You can really see all the work that went into it when you do some close-ups, which really works well with this lighter and more show-accurate shade of purple. The backpack and other design elements of this figure really reminds me of the Masterpiece version, but obviously on a much different scale. There are a couple of elements like these small wings on the lower legs that from my perspective as a fan of the laser really didn't need to be there, but they're inconspicuous enough to not be a bother. I also like that these versions of the figure kept his very iconic head shape and design as I haven't really liked any of the more modern takes. Ultimately for me at least, this is a nice figure, looks really good in this shade of purple, and lines up well with the last few lines of Transformers, especially the War for Cybertron ones. As for this bonus piece, my boys haven't gone to opening it yet, so I have left it for now in the bag and box. However, I will do a short on this, or maybe even bring it out for the Commander Class Optimus review when it comes out. On to his alt mode, starting as a laser, because to be honest, that is all I really care about for Shockwave. We all know that his best form is his robot mode, and that's the way he has mostly been portrayed in all media over the years. However, even though the laser would obviously never fit into the hand of a toy figure, I'd like to know that he can at least transform into that. Yes, it's never been advertised this way, as far as I know for this figure, but I highly suspect it was made this way on purpose. As for the ship mode, it's fine. I don't particularly like all modes that are completely out of scale with everything else, and so this one really held no interest for me. It's also the toned down version from the War for Cybertron version, so much less bulky. I'll never display it this way anyway. Perhaps my boys will enjoy playing with it in this form, so I guess it's kind of good that it can be used both ways. Taking a deeper dive into this mode, I'm actually quite surprised how close this looks to the various laser iterations of Shockwave and holds up quite nicely. The hose, I believe, is a bit off from where it should connect to, but only slightly, and there are elements that stick out like a sore thumb, specifically the silver feet, which I wish they could be tucked away, and the handle. But overall, it is clear it is a laser, and not any laser, but Shockwave himself. They even included a shiny plastic in the barrel part of it, which is a nice touch, as they could have simply left it empty. This way, it has a much more sci-fi laser feel to it. As for the ship, you simply need to turn it around and open up the wings and small landing gear piece at the front, and voila, he is transformed. Again, in this form, his feet just stick out way too much, but I guess there was no need to hide them away if the spaceship was meant to be the real design. I do like the shockwave head reproduction being integrated into this design, so I guess you can technically use it in scale with other flyers if you imagine it as simply a flying rectangular prism and not a ship to carry anyone in. Okay, so on to the transformation, which is pretty straightforward. We're going to open up this chest piece like so, and then just push the head back in. It fits in nice and snug in this space, and it clicks back in. And then we'll move to the backpack here, and open it up, like by pulling it apart. And now the top part's open. And then we'll just flip it around to the front, 
take off the hose. We're going to connect that later. And then we'll just bring up the arms 180 degrees and flip the lower part 180 degrees. We'll do the same here. So lift it up 180 degrees. And then turn the lower arm like so. Once it's all lined up, you can just simply straighten this front laser part up. And once everything is in place, just click it in. Now we'll move to the back portion. We'll open up the side leg and fold it open and down 90 degrees. You push the leg back in so the upper leg fits into the lower leg. We've seen this a lot with other transformers. We'll do the same for the other side. So we'll just open up this side panel, fold it down and then out, and close up the leg like so. And then we'll click the leg together. They tab right here, push them together. And you can see that these parts, these inner tabs, they click together to form in this mode, the handle. And you can take this tab right here and you're going to tab it into this space right about here. And it clicks in nice and snug as well. And then you just have to put the hose into the handle, straighten everything up. And there you go, the laser for shockwave. Flip it around and you have the spaceship. So just open up these little wings over here on both sides and then in the front there's a little stand once we straighten it up you just pull that out like this and there you go this spaceship version if that's something you want Let's start with the War for Cybertron line and Megatron's lieutenants, the ever-conniving Starscream and ever-loyal Soundwave. It's clear these were all designed at the same time as they completely match up in size and generally have the same aesthetic, specifically all the engraved design elements instead of the more smooth Studio Series figures. They do look really good together though, and since the bulk of our main Decepticon army is from this line still, it's a good match for now. As for how he compares to the Masterpiece version, there's 100% no comparison. That Masterpiece version is a thing of beauty and really can't be beat. However, I feel like this smaller design took a lot of the cues from the Masterpiece one, which is kind of cool to see. You can see a lot more differences between the two when they're transformed into the lasers, but the main design cues are there, and for a non-Masterpiece version, it works well, minus those feet. I took a whole bunch of shots so you could really see how they compare. I just really dig the smooth toy and cartoon accurate masterpiece version of Shockwave. Like I said though, nice to have Shockwave transform into a laser. Have to throw in one more version of Shockwave, this time the Combiner Wars version, which is a nice little figure to have to go along with other core figures. Other than the head, not really comparable, but he also transforms into a laser, so that's good. A little bit of inception going on here. All three together so you can get a better idea of scale. Now I was most excited for this comparison and display. The IDW run of Shockwave when he was a senator and the Empirata storyline has to be one of my favorite storylines for Transformers. So I had to do a shot of them together. While they really look so different from each other, this was actually story accurate so it was very cool to have these two together. For those of you who haven't read those issues or want to know more about this really interesting take on Shockwave, I highly suggest tracking down whatever you can. My review of Senator Shockwave up here and in the info section below has some more backstory explained if you want to check that out. Finally, I figured I'd show some images of how he compares in ship mode to some of the other flyers. I guess he can be displayed this way with some of the Seekers, but definitely not in my collection. Funny enough, I did a few shots of Shockwave in this mode next to Cyclonus, and they don't look half bad together. In the next section, I'll show some more dynamic poses, which actually kind of work. I've shown this already at the start, but this truly is a great display if you want to pose Shockwave on his own somewhere in your home. I believe I have the original comic book back at my parents' place, so next time I'm there, I'm going to try and find it. All three together could make for a nice little Shockwave tribute display. Of course, I had to take a shot of Shockwave with the other G1 Decepticon icons. If you don't have the space, this is the quintessential way to do it. 
However, ours is going to go right into our G1 display of all the original Decepticons that crash landed on Earth and were reformatted in 1984. By the way, that's not the Ravage that came with my Netflix sound wave, but the Masterpiece one. That Netflix design, which is being reused quite a bit these days, is horrendous. A fun interlude was Shockwave holding Shockwave again, simply because I had another shot of him this way that I liked. And like I said earlier, some action shots with Cyclonus, one of my favorite characters and figures. What do you guys think? If I had to display him in this mode, this might be the way to go, or perhaps as a companionship to the Nemesis. Now as promised, a few more reproductions, this time from the comic books. Try to get all of them, though most of these are not easy. I think my personal favorite is of Shockwave holding his original head, as well as the one with Scourge. This episode's box art, as you know, is actually really special, so thought I'd spend a bit more time in it because it really is a collectible work of art. The front panel reproduces the original comic book perfectly, and I love the grainy feel to it, plus how it actually looks like a comic book. Back is fairly standard, though they did add in some nice comic book panels to liven it up a bit. The inside has a nice big panel as well with Prime's removed head on that mechanical contraption Shockwave created and which comes with the figure. It also has a bit of his original description on the top right, which is a fun read. Great side art, which I don't believe was from the book, or if it was, may have been from a different run. If you know, let me know in the comment section below. The other side also has a bunch more panels from the comic, this time in black and gray. It's interesting to see how they drew Megatron back at the start and how he evolved over the years. Overall, a nice box to have and keep. Well, that's it for our review of the new comic book edition of Shockwave. Hope you guys enjoyed it, had a little fun, and learned something new. By the way, a quick story for you as we close out. When I was a kid, my dad almost bought me Shockwave, but the box was damaged. My dad was just about to convince the cashier to give us a discount, but instead of getting the perfectly good Shockwave because the box was slightly damaged, I went for a full price larger GoBot, which I ultimately got two of by chance and still have. If only I could go back in time. Anyway, see you all next time, and remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Bravo.